remember when we were strong. Back in the days before King Tenebrae and his royal guard, and the people of Amosran took up their own arms for fun and profit. Before all that, there was just us, the Viridian Outriders. We kept the roads and trails safe and secure, with homes and forts scattered about and locales civilized and not. Time passed, and we have been replaced. And yet, I hear the rumblings and murmurs of the roads being less safe than they had been. Monsters sniffing around in smaller towns and magic acting oddly. Who knows? Maybe we'll be needed again. Hello, and welcome back to Another Path. My name is Chase, and I remain your GM. Today, the Outriders and Brother Lobazon reach the top of the tower and take on, well, whatever's up there. Thank you to our backers, Jeremy, Connor, and Christina for their support. If you like what you hear, consider donating to us at patreon.com slash ghostlightmedia, and maybe try checking out some of the other shows on the network. And with that, sit back, relax, and enjoy your trip down another path. Your crew makes your way up the stairs, and who's taking point? I think Lobazon's probably ahead, since Lobazon now has sort of a sense of kind of mm-hmm. how to follow these things. Oh yeah, we see we see Brother Lobazon like put his nose to the ground, mm-hmm. Bloodhound style, and we all take a step back. And this is why he's here. I have one job, and you're doing a great job. And it's being creepy, Brother Lobazon, as you open this trap door i need you to make me a constitution saving throw uh-oh all right the 15 that'll save Ooh. you open this door and are not immediately blinded by the rapid change in light as you move onto the roof of this building mm. Ascending into the brilliance, you find yourselves in an odd space. Presumably outdoors, or whatever counts for outdoors down here. Light domes the area as small raised boxes and benches dot the floor. In the center stands a massive tree. Seeming to be made out of both the odd gray stone that dominates the architecture and the vile fluids of the approximations. It wafts in a breeze that it may have never felt. So, we gotta chop down that tree or something? Uh, I I don't know. I'm a little baffled by the presence of the tree to to start. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's baffling. We're we're underground. Mm Mm-hmm. And is the light coming from the tree? Make me, I will let you choose, Arcana or Investigation. They are equal to me. I don't think Harper would necessarily key into this, weirdly enough, as magical right now. So I'm going to go Investigation. Okay. Oh, that's a nat 19. Mm -hmm. Uh, 26. You can, the tree is absolutely the source of light. If you can somehow stop this tree whatever it is you may be able to stop the light which as far as you know is the goal here well we need to we want to turn the lights off right but I think part of this is also learning how it works how we can turn it on and off goodness because Um, there's a bunch of lights everywhere but we want to chop it down before more of them come out Chase I still have to take magic up actually can I examine Mm -hmm. the tree using my magnifying glass is it is tree like giving me any sort of like notable magical presence? Um, sure. Go ahead and um, yeah. Get, make me a perception check. Natural twenty. You notice that as you are getting close to this thing, it begins to rear back to take a swipe at you. The tree. Correct. Swamping willow. Roll initiative. Oh fuck! Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, there's my stinker initiative roll. <laughs> oh, I'm no. sorry. Oh, no. And that 20 has granted me a fight. 
20 saved you from being all from being surprised for a round. Okay. Oh. A seven for Brother Lobazon. Um, we are yeah. all appropriately caught off guard, I think. I got a, shit. a 16 for me. Okay. An eight for Crunchwrap. Okay. Hold on one He's second, being a slow please. boy today. He's got a tummy ache. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but I IRL have a tummy ache today. Oh, You're no. So brave. God gives his hurtiest of tummies to his bravest of girlies. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, did anybody beat a 17? Sure didn't. Want there? Here we go. Here's the AP crew I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anybody beat a 15? Okay. Justin. And Justin, what did you get? 16. Beat a 10? Sure didn't. Oh, no. Who, uh, let's take a look here. Anybody, I uh, know Brother Lobazon, you got a seven. Anybody beat a seven? Crunchwrap got an eight. Okay. Sure didn't. Ryan, what are you at, my boy? I don't know. What are you at? <laughs> I don't know. What are you at? <laughs> I don't know. What do you want to do today? <laughs> uh, Harper's at a five. Okay. Cecil? Cecil is, uh, Two thirds of the way through an alarm spell on the trap door, uh-huh. <laughs> and has rolled a natural one. Okay. There we go. Very I think we good. are all appropriately caught off guard. Yeah, I mean to be fair, the heck. All mm-hmm. right. So it is going to get this swipe on you. What the fuck is this tree? It's the approximate tree. Oh, it wow. is still the gray stone stuff. It is both gray stone and the viscous fluid oh. working in tandem. Well, you've met tree ants. This is a tree isn't. <laughs> yeah. It's a tree ain't. It's a tree-ish. Stone roll tree? above roll on 18 or higher. I dare you. <laughs> I I I I shan't. I simply shan't. I dare you. <laughs> It uses action number one to make an attack and misses entirely. And we use... It's going in for me, I'm assuming. Action number two to do a shenanigan. Hey, hey, look at this. Look at this big dumb tree. Don't. (laughs) Don't mock the tree. (laughs) It takes a swipe at Harper. Shield up. Harper, you hear a thunk. As this hard stone smashes against your shield, ah! With another branch, it whips some of that approximation fluid off, and it lands behind you all. Uh-oh. Oh boy! And making babies. <laughs> Arabin, you're up. There's many. Okay, I'm a I'm a run up on this tree <laughs> and hit it with my sword and see what happens. Okay. Oh God. Look, it is a tried and true method. That's, hit it with a sword? Uh, yeah. An 11 to hit? <laughs> no. All right. Second attack. That's much better. That's a 23 to hit. Yeah, that'll that'll do it. That'll okay. do it. <laughs> okay. That's going to be nine damage. Okay. It does not like that. Okay, so it does look like it is damaged by that. Yeah, you're, the, the, the first cut hits the stone, but your second cut across the side goes through the liquid. Oh, uh, okay. And it siphons off some of that. Ew. Um, Arabin, actually, make me a perception check real quick. Just real quick. 14. The sword does take it in. Oh. It is now the minion's turn, and it is going to go for Cecil. Yeah, that seems right. We'll see if I can roll above a 10. I do. Hmm. That's going to be a dirty 20 and a 14. Do both of those hit? I'm going to silvery barbs the 20. So I have to re-roll that. Yeah, re-roll. Higher. Cool. Okay, great. So they'll both hit, and I uh, give Harper advantage. Excellent. All right. Cheers. First one on you, Cecil. If I can find my dice. Here we go. Not too bad. First one is going to be seven piercing damage. Not too bad, he says. (laughs) I know they're made of goo, but I am the squishy. Mm -hmm. (laughs) 
And second one is going to be eight slashing damage, and I need you to make me a strength saving throw. I shan't. Oh, no. <laughs> I simply shan't. I simply shan't. Um, um, it's going to be a zero, my guy. Oh, oh no. Oh. That's so this low. This thing rolls over you. Literally, it takes a swipe at you and knocks you back with another swipe. It knocks you to the ground and literally crawls on top of you. I don't care for that. You are now being smothered. Oh, God. Oh, boy. We're not at Waffle House. That's not supposed to happen. <laughs> okay. What is the uh, is I, there a specific condition? You are engulfed. Engulfed. Correct. Can I speak? You cannot breathe and you are restrained and you will take an amount of poison damage at the start of this thing's turn. But it does not specifically say you can't speak, so you can still cast spells. Okay, that's helpful. (laughs) Well, if you can't breathe, like... I'm going to say he can cast spells. I want you you all to know... um... I, I was te- my girlfriend had texted me asking how the recording session was going mm-hmm. and I said and I quote we're absolutely sweeping a combat which has me worried and she says yeah it seems like it could be a setup lol <laughs> <laughs> false sense of confidence the classic went, greenly yup. way classic greenly payoff look gotta get you ready for it uh okay that is gonna take us to crunch rap uh so I assume he can't really rap without also possibly hurting Cecil. <laughs> can wrap the tree. He Go can wrap, wrap the, the tree. tree. Like, he can certainly attempt without hurting Cecil. Like, this thing is, I should point out, this thing is not small. Both of these, actually, are classified as large. I was going to ask how big this tree yeah. is. Are there any, yeah. like, sort of roots or... What are you trying to do? So, if he constricts, I want to know, like, where he's going to wrap around. He would be wrapping around the center of the trunk. The roots are all made of that stone. You have, like, uh, you don't even have to roll. Crunch wrap can't do much to the stone. You got to go after, like, the goo part. All right. Look, very Garden of Eden. Uh, Just take in a tree, mm -hmm. give him an apple, call it a day. (laughs) (laughs) Arabin's going to tell Crunch wrap to constrict the, the gooey part. Excellent. Ooh. That's a nine. That's not going to do it. Yeah. Crunchwrap kind of like swirls around and then like falls. Mm -hmm. Can't really get a grip on it. Cool. Cool. Brother Lobazon, you're up. All right. Is there any any part of Cecil that can be grabbed? Is there anything sticking out from under? under, Mm. uh, A boot. Uh, I reach into the goo to try to. You. uh, you can offer a help action. If you would like to use your round, um, I will let Cecil make another save okay. against this then thing. That's, that's what Lobo, then that's what Lobo Zone's going to do. Don't do it. Don't do it. I'm at a, <laughs> I'm at a negative one to save against this because I'm going to have to roll strength. Cecil, just fireball from within it. <laughs> I have a bad plan. A bad plan? Well, then let me let, then let me help your bad plan so you at least get, you know. Yeah, you can, okay. whatever your okay. bad plan is, uh, you will have advantage on it. How about that? Uh, mechanically, so, that will not assist. Since you are spending your turn to do that, Cecil, you will not take the poison damage at the top of your turn. Oh, perfect. Thank you. You carve out a little uh, just space enough. that they can breathe <laughs> in. Yeah, Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, uh, because it deals poison damage on help. your turn, which is savage. Um, Terrible. That is going to be Harper. Oh, shit. Poor Cecil. Um, Bad things always happen to them. I also have a bad idea. Yay! <laughs> it's my favorite con. That's why we play this game. We don't play game this for good ideas. I see this happen, and I go, oh, shit. And I see this is, I see, like, Arabin, who's our fighter go up and clang against this thing and it not go super well. And I see this thing happen and Harper's putting the math together. It's like, this thing's going to keep making more of those. Um, I say uh, Harper goes, Oh shit. Ignis, go get Cecil. Um, I'm going to pull the spinner out of my pocket Mm -hmm. and I'm going to set it up right at the base of the tree. Okay. Love it. There's a roll associated with this, right? It is a dex check. 
What weapons are you proficient with out of curiosity? Simple martial and firearms at the DM's discretion. <laughs> I will I will I will say your martial weapons dexterity so you can make a dexterity attack. Okay. To get so this thing looking- going. I do technically get to use this is me stretching. Um <laughs> I get to use my int for magical weapons. Okay. Can I use my int here? Yes. Okay. Then I have a plus seven to this roll. Cool. With a 17 on the die. You got it. Ooh. Ooh. Thank you, Dice Tower. I don't think I can, like, Beyblade let it rip and, (laughs) you know, let it go a distance. I think I have to be right on top of this thing. But, like, mm -hmm. so I know I'm going to catch Arabin and Crunchwrap in this, but I'm really hoping I can get Ignis out of the blast zone. Okay, you get Ignis out of the blast zone, and you let her rip. <laughs> I need Crunchwrap to make me a constitution saving throw. Oh no, my boy. I'm sorry. My magic, magic boy. <laughs> I'll buy you a new snake. Okay. What, ha- that's, what happens if Crunchwrap dies? That's a 16. He can persist. He will need to make this save. If he continues to exist within the aura of the top, he will have to make that save in order to continue to exist. However, in getting the top spun, you have stumbled into a way to deal additional damage to this thing. Okay. 2d12. Ooh, Chase loves d12s. The best die. The best die. 15. Hell yeah. The approximatory takes 15 anti-magic damage uh its form is muted slightly and all of harper's the artificer (laughs) who Mm -hmm. persists on magic items all of her gear just kind of goes oh no and so i am going to try to just get some distance i'm not going to be able to clear it the radius this turn Mm -hmm. but i'm going to move backwards in order to try to get clear of the radius on my next turn absolutely um ignis will then take his turn he's gonna is he allowed to try to shove the creature that's engulfing (laughs) no because ignis is medium this is large does it make any sense cecil for ignis to try to pull you out or just like otherwise he's just gonna make an attack against this thing that's fine just make the attack against this thing then Ignis, Ignis will just go for a crunch. Mm-hmm. Um, sorry, a chomp. The crunch market has been cornered. Right. Right, right, right. Um, yeah, for sure. For it's in that one. Um, he chomp. He do not do much. The natural force resistance keeps his jaws pried open and just like. Ah. It's like ah. it's like two ends of the same magnet, like mm-hmm. or two poles, like repelling each other. Absolutely. He's confused. And magnets are canon. Magnets are canon. Magnets are canon. Cecil. You're in a compromising position. What you doing? Cecil moves to their fingers just enough to tap a pattern on the inside of their wrist. And suddenly there are four Cecils. Mm. I cast mirror image Mm -hmm. in an attempt to confuse this thing as best as I possibly can. Okay. It says three illusory duplicates of yourself appear in your space. Mm hmm. So I'm hoping that this will help. Okay. Um, that's my action. Mm-hmm. I will then, uh, quicken spell, like just kind of tilt my left hand a little bit away from me. And, uh, the, uh, thing needs to make a con save. Okay. Eight. Fail. This thing is going to take seven points of cold damage from frostbite. Okay. And it has disadvantage on its next attack. Okay. So I'm just trying to throw all the magic (laughs) I possibly can at it Mm -hmm. instead of making a strength save. (laughs) Sounds good. Um, Can I move? No. You are restrained. I am fully restrained. Okay. Uh, But you can go ahead and roll me uh, that uh, strength saving throw again and... Hope you get a 16. With advantage, because Lobazon? Yep. My guy. With advantage, you say? With advantage. With advantage. Mm-hmm. Cool. That's a three. Oh, oh no. The first one 
was another zero. Oh my god. I can get you out of this. I'm what really is your hoping. strength mod? Negative one. Okay, yeah. but it's not. It's it's Cecil. I thought you were yeah. working with like a negative five here. Yeah, he 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 runs a tea sho- a tea and used bookshop. It's not like he's hitting the planet fitness. <laughs> realm fitness. Realm fitness. Realm fitness. Realm fitness. Oh, realm fitness is canon now. <laughs> New pet shop ad forthcoming. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. Plain mm-hmm. fitness. Plain fitness. Fitness plane? I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll workshop it. We'll workshop I'm it. I'm fitting this plane up in this. Griffin, are you adding Are you adding realm fitness to the good? Yeah, but. Yeah, but. Good, there you good, go. good, good, good. Rim was saying that she is a hankering to record a new ad. There is a new one written. We just have to get to it. Cool. Rhett Dudeman's extra planar vacations, extreme vacay to realms far away. <laughs> <laughs> My God, I hate it. Thank you. Ugh. Phenomenal. Imagine Macho Man Randy Savage doing a travel agency ad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to attack Crunchwrap now. No, no, my oh, boy. No. That is going to be a 16 and an 18. Both of those hit. Okay. First attack is going to be a 13 damage. <sighs> okay. Not nearly as bad this time around. Uh, that is going to be another eight damage. What's he sitting at? 39. Whew. He's All he's right. a beef crunch wrap, but he's not. Oh, my God. <laughs> Extra steak. I'm just glad he's not chicken. Mm. <laughs> Arabin, you're up. So I see that. Crunchwrap is struggling in this Mm -hmm. field, so I'm gonna go use my bonus action and go Vivius. You can't anti-magic field. It just doesn't work? If you're in that field, it does not work. You feel your pennant is weak against your chest in a way that it hasn't been ever, really. Would Erebin know that it's because he's in the field that doesn't work? I would say yes. You are from. We know the spinner. Yeah, he knows what the spinner is and does. So can I use my movement to get out of it? Yes. Um, and then since I used my bonus action, use an action to speak the word again. What are you trying to do specifically? I'm trying to get out of the field and try to turn him back into the staff again. Gotcha. But he's Um, in the anti-magic field, right? Correct. So here's the thing. Uh, no, is the short answer, and you know that this would not work, but you also know that Crunchwrap should be able to get out on his turn. Okay, can I uh, know that I'm going to get Crunchwrap out of it on his turn and hold my action to say it? Sure. Okay, that's what I'm going to do then, because I need to get him back into staff form. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, That is going to take us to... The creation, the fruit of the tree, if you will. Gross. I shan't. I shan't. shan't. I simply Sim- shan't. Simply shan't. <laughs> and it is going to roll to continue to attack Cecil. At okay. disadvantage and against At mirror image. And against mirror image. So, yeah. Let's Okay. Well, let's first go. one was let's a go. nat one. Cool. Ooh. Keeping it. So, and Hell here's the thing. Yeah. You are restrained by it, so... The uh the advantage equals out, so it's it's rolling straight. Okay. Uh, second attack is going to be uh, a nineteen. Mm, yeah, that so that might hit. Okay. So let's see. It's a D four. No, it's Mirror a D twenty. Roll a D twenty. Okay. I have rolled an eleven. It hits a dupe. Excellent. I'm down a dupe. You are down a dupe, and you are continuing to struggle against the weird, cloying, amorphous blob. Um, This one seems to be very strong, very, like, together, but it is not holding any kind of salient shape. Thanks, I hate it. That is going to take us to Crunchwrap. Okay, does he need to make a con save before he moves? He does not. If he is just getting out, the con save would come at the end of the round. Okay, he's gonna slither out of the field at my command Mm -hmm. towards where I am. Mm -hmm. And as soon as he's out, Arabin's gonna 
Say Vivius. Okay, you staff him. Vivius. Yeah, it is a staff. Brother Lobazon, what are you doing? And alive. Okay. I guess I feel a little bit better now that this, this, he's got the, uh, his, his duplicates out. So. Yeah, I got him. I got him. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll, but I'll pull out my short sword and just sort of be trying to cut, out, cut at the yep. parts of it that are, you know, on, a, on a, him. a solid strategy. Go ahead and roll to attack. So yeah, just trying to try to cut him free. Uh, <laughs> that's a 17 to hit. <laughs> That'll hit. Uh, for eight. Second attack. I forgot I had two attacks. <laughs> Ooh. Oh. Uh, that, but that's a seven, so that's not going to hit. That's not going to do it, no. But eight is uh, not nothing against this thing as it uh, it takes that. And Harper, you're up. Oh, dang, Flabbit. How do I get this thing to him? Um, Harper's trying to run some equations of how to get to Cecil mm-hmm. um, and is going to... Uh, do some actual, I think, like magic, magic, mm-hmm. and not just some like math magic. Mm-hmm. Um, but like calculates the basically the hypotenuse of the triangle between herself and Cecil's uh, wand, which is a magic item that she knows. Yes. and is basically going to like form like a tether between like her spear which is her casting focus and Mm -hmm. cecil's wand and use that to go through physical space and cast vortex warp targeting cecil okay to pull cecil out from under the goop and bring them uh we'll say like 10 feet from ignis like on uh, far enough away from the goop like maybe like 30 feet away from the goop 35 feet Sure. So that it's going to have to really try to get to them again. That's fine. Um, and I will um, pull Cecil out of there. I am going to need some kind of a check because he, while you, unless there is something where you do not need to see this person, um, because the, the wand specific, oh. like, yeah. like is, is all of Cecil like, op- like, like is the creature opaque? Like I can't see Cecil. You can't see him now. I'll, I'll let this fly. I'll let this fly, but you got, you got to sell me on it. Um, because I like what you're doing. That's a really cool idea, and I want this to work. But I need I need you to make some kind of check, investigation, for like calculating out where You've, they would be in the like based on the struggles. You still got detect magic up. I do still have detect magic up. So I will. I'm going to go ahead and call this a thirteen investigation check. No. Sorry, buddy. No, that's a 11. What you do hit is the goop. Okay. The goop gets a con save. The goop gets a con save. Goop is good at con, but I've been rolling like trash tonight. What's the save? Uh, Con 15. I have rolled a 10. Oh, my God. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> So thank praise the eminence. All right. (laughs) I think the way this plays out is you send this little thing spiraling out and it hits the thing and you start cursing and suddenly it and it just like portal like warps to the other side of the field. All right. Task failed successfully. Let's go. (gasps) Thank you. Or not how I thought it would work. (coughs) All right. Ignis, body him! Bonus action, Ignis will go charging after the goop and make his attack. Yep, and you you sent it 30 feet away, so that is well within Ignis's reach, if I'm remembering correctly. Yep. Iggy has a speed of 40. Yep. Um, I've got a 21 to hit. That'll hit. And 8 force damage. Nice. So 4, assuming that still tracks. Yep, correct. And the top, the top's still spinning. Yep. And go ahead and so roll me 2d12. Uh, 14. Doesn't like that. Du- double sevens. Cool. Cecil, you're up. All right, Ce- Cecil, you good? The, the spinner is up, just FYI. Stay away from the tree. So with the spinner, I'm sure that between Cecil and Stuart, they would have conducted multiple uh, tests to see if I throw a spell at something within the spinner's range if the spell fizzes before it lands. Yes, it would. It you would. can what I will say is that this is a, you know, it's a tree. 
this the the spinner can only cover so much of it. If you want to try and hit the tree, you can go for like the boughs. OK, so I could I could shoot high. OK, great. yeah. Thank you. Yes. OK. Uh, AC is a little bit higher up there because uh, you're hitting a smaller target. Cecil uh, is going to move as far away as possible. Mm-hmm. Would like to do some mental math, triangulate. There's the tree. There's the the goopy thing. Uh-huh. And I would like to be the farthest point of the tri- triangle that I can't be. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, and then f- uh, from that uh, very good triangle, uh, pulls out the wand and shoots the green energy at the tree. Okay. So I'm going to shoot for that. Uh, 20. That'll Not hit. Not natural. All right. Mm-hmm. So that's going to be at third level. Mm-hmm. Ray of sickness, so it needs to make a con save. Okay. I need more dice. I need better dice. Yeah, you're going to hit. Ooh, boys, those are some good numbers. So that is going to be 28 points of poison damage. Woo! And it on is poisoned. The, nice. On the tree? On the tree. Damn. Okay. Until the end of my next turn. That's how you get a thneed that everyone needs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, and then I'm going to quicken spell and shoot a fire bolt at the tree as well. Okay. Uh, 25 to hit. 2d10. That's going to be 15 fire damage. I'm I want to see <laughs> if the tree doesn't like fire. Uh, the tree is eh, to fire. Okay. Doesn't like it. I mean, it is fire. Mm-hmm. And that is my turn. It is, in fact, its turn. And it is going to make two attacks. The first one is going to be on Harper. Okay. And it is probably going to hit, weirdly. I don't get to do that much to Harper. Yeah, on a straight attack, that is going to be a a 24. 24, you say? 24. Damn it. Yeah, that hits. You were going (laughs) to, but you were going to try and shield me, weren't you? I (laughs) was. And I get it for free as a battlesmith. No, I, I don't hate the hustle. But it only gets me up to a 23 AC. Only. All right. Okay. That is going to be. Ba, ba, ba. That is going to be six poison damage and oh. 11 piercing damage. I am resistant to poison damage. Ah. Um, I, I'm a stout halfling. I got some dwarf blood in me. Yes, you do. That still so hurts a lot. The second attack is going to be on the top. Okay, I do save against detect, or uh, I do save concentration detect magic. Excellent. Ow! Oh fuck! Oh hell! Oh damn it! That's going to be a twenty-four to hit, and so it takes the branch, whips it down, and just n- like sends the top skittering off to the side. Ah, shit. Okay, game on. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, yeah, Cecil, we just weighed it out. (laughs) Okay, change of plans. (laughs) Arabin, you're up. Motherfucker. All right, uh, can I get up? Can I get into melee range with it? Can I get what? what? Absolutely. All right, I'm going to run up to it and give it a a heckin' slash. Chase, we were fighting trees all last campaign. We really didn't fight that many. I felt like we needed to get some more in. (laughs) That is a 19 to hit. Mm Mm-hmm. That'll hit. You know, when the trees are the bad guy, you expect to fight more trees. So then that's seven damage. Mm Mm-hmm. And attack numero dos. It's going to be a 23 to hit. Yep. And that is nine damage. Nice. Total of 16. There you go. There's my Hexblade. A meal in timber. <laughs> <laughs> Please stop. No. <laughs> that's it. That's the one. Okay. <laughs> we found it. We found lime. It is now the, oh, the fruit's turn. No. Uh, and fruit. it is going to attack Ignis. Oh, bitch. You better not. <laughs> no, your boy. First attack is going to be a 26. Second attack is going to be a 19. Ah. Silvery barbs on the first one. 
I can't use it on the tree. Let's That's go. fair. <laughs> Let's go. Silvery barbs. 25. Shit. Yeah. <sighs> um, still hits. Um, Ignis will reaction deflect attack against the second to impose disadvantage. Okay. 17. Damn. Both hits still. All right. We've used hey, our tricks. That's what they're for. I give myself the advantage. Okay. The good news is that Ignis is immune to poison damage. Yeah, steel types are immune to poison types. <laughs> that does track, yes, 100%. First attack is going to be 11, I'm sorry, 13 piercing damage. Oh, Jesus. Okay. I'm piercing, very glad, you say. I'm very glad we have Justin Rules Lawyer Betancourt on the call. <laughs> I only know Pokemon rules. <laughs> okay. <laughs> They're always applicable. And the second attack is going to deal uh, six slashing damage. Oh, and God. Okay. Ignis needs to make a strength saving throw. Twelve. Insufficient. Okay. So he is restrained and he can't breathe, but he doesn't breathe and he would take poison damage. But he's immune to poison. He is immune to poison. Weirdly enough, he might need to breathe. Huh? <laughs> it doesn't specifically call it out, which it often does for constructs. Yeah, no, it usually does. Interesting. Well, we will cross well, that bridge when we get to it. Okay. Mother help. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, buddy, no. And crunch wrap is sticked. Brother Lobazon, you're up. Uh, how bad is uh, Cecil looking? His left arm hangs limp. Um, and there's not as much blood as there could be. Okay. Um, well, <laughs> he's going to, uh, come up to you and put his, his hands on you, uh, and, and whisper something in your ear that you, you don't hear, uh, because you feel just like a slight weird tickling coming from his hands as webbing covers up, uh, your, your wounded arm and, uh, you get 12, you get 12, uh, 12 hit points back. Spider gnome, spider gnome. Oh, oh sorry, 14, 14 hit points back. 14? I'm a new man. <laughs> <laughs> Brother Lovazon. Uh, that's the, my turn. Bringing the good touch. Thank you. Harper, you're up. Oh, Jesus, my boy. Hamana, 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 hamana. I'm, can I get to Ignis with my movement? 25 feet? No. Okay. You very specifically said it was 30 feet out. Then I will take my 25 and I'll throw my spear. Okay. Because it has the returning feature still. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, which means I get to do... I can, <laughs> I can fucking ping pong. I can go mm -hmm. throw, return, throw. Yeah, absolutely. As Harper throws an Arab and goes, Jart! <laughs> <laughs> the first attack is going to be 14. That will hit. Okay. That's good damage. Uh, 12. Mm -hmm. Magical piercing. Yeah. Second attack, because I have that now. Mm -hmm. 12 to hit. That will not do it. Fuck. Bonus action to command Ignis. Ignis is going to self-repair. Okay. He can do that three times per day. Neat. He, as an action, that the magical mechanisms inside restore 2d8 plus 3 hit points. Nice. And he is going to restore 11 hit points to himself. Cool, cool. Bringing him up to 23. Okay. Action bonus movement. That's all I got. All right. Cecil, you're up. Is there a way to tell how rough the fruit is looking? Fruit yeah, I is hate that it's called the fruit. It's the tree and the fruit. I um, know, but I hate it. Yeah, it's bad. Um yeah, fruit <laughs> is not looking great. Okay. Neither of them are looking great. The tree is looking worse. Well, I'm running out of tricks. So Yeah, I was I'm gonna going say it's to... like you've been you've been dropping sorcery points at there. I have been using every part of the sorcery. That's how you gotta do it. 10 AC included. All right, but I have advantage. So I'm just going to kind of try and keep my distance from everything. I'm just going to throw another ray of sickness at the tree mm -hmm. um, and aim for a spot I can hit, which I have advantage on. That is a natural 20. Yes. Roll damage. So did I say I was using a third level? I was going to use my third level. 
That's fine. Okay. I need more dice because it's double dice. Mm hmm. 8d8. Cool. Oh, my dude. That's going to be. Uh, it needs to make a con save. Okay. Um, 17. It saves. Um, that is going to be 44 points of poison damage. <laughs> Jesus Murphy. Uh, yeah. How, how does this look? I have no idea. I honestly <laughs> don't know. It's a big old green bowl of energy that comes out of the wand and Cecil is done. Cecil is very, very done. <laughs> Fights do not take this long. <laughs> Couldn't breathe for a hot second there. <laughs> This isn't great. We're underground. It's all very bright. I just don't like a lot of this. The bolt leaves your wand, collides with the boughs of the tree, and a reaction begins to happen. The approximation goo kind of sloughs down onto the ground as it loses its virility. Um, and the light begins to flicker. Timber! You just Avada Kedavra a tree. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And the fruit? You no, know, the fruit is still up. Fuck. The fruit is now fully separate. Fuck. <laughs> but boy. you do, as we get to the tree, you see the stone start to flake away and change. Whatever was going on there, it looks like it is undoing itself in some way. And where the stone is flaking away, you are seeing some kind of like a white fleshy material underneath. But it's, it's only been a couple of seconds. So we'll have to wait till it's turn again to find out oh, more. Oh, what the fuck? Arabin, you're up. Molting. Which is something we've oh. never seen before. Oh, okay. <laughs> Am I close enough to the fruit to get... You can get it. over there, yes. Okay, Arabin's going to go over to the fruit, and uh, as he is about to swing his sword, a red light emanates from, from his amulet into his eyes, and he rears back, and he reaches out his hand to touch the fruit as he casts Inflict Wounds. Yes! Do it. Do it. Wound the flute. Do it. So that's gonna be a twenty-five to hit. Yeah, I'll do Hell it. Hell yes. Uh, and let's see. That is what kind of damage? Okay, well, that's necro. Mm-hmm. That's arrow, Ben. Ben's arrow now. <laughs> Good, for Ben. Okay, that is eighteen necrotic damage. Woo! As he touches the fruit. Just these black splintery veins go from the amulet down Arabin's arms and into the fruit. It is going to attempt to attack you in response. Because that was... It was rude. I thought it was cool. I thought it was cool. But I, that's the first time I've used that spell. And I can use it once per long rest without expending a spell slot. Mm, gotta love an invocation spell. It's um, uh, the shadow touched feet. Ah, because my boy is shadow touched. There's never been a more shadow touched guy on this planet. <laughs> First attack misses. Second attack is going to be a twenty six. Oh well. All right. Can Ignis use his deflect reaction when he's restrained? He's in there. <laughs> I mean, I guess he just can't move. Yeah, he can go ahead and do it. So what? Disadvantage. Disadvantage. <laughs> nice. 17? Oh, uh, that still hits. Ah. Beats my AC by one. Or the shot. He's All just right. wriggling under there. All right, Arabin, you're going to take eight slashing damage. Um, but it's not going to engulf you because it's already got something. And it can't engulf two things. Good. Well, at least there's that. That sounds like quitter talk. <laughs> Don't <laughs> say Lobazon. that. You're up. Uh, all right. Uh, Lobazon is going to fire two arrows or attempt to fire two arrows into the fruit. Cool. So first shot. Something, something, William Tell. 22. 22. Second shot is at 12. Okay. So. 22 will hit. 12 will not. For uh, eight piercings. Okay. Cecil, back to you. <laughs> I'm sorry, no, Harper. Skipped Harper. Harper Harper's turn. That's me. Kind of following suit. I'm going to I'm gonna close in that extra little bit of distance so I don't have to throw my spear and take two attacks. Uh, First attack sucks. That's a. Uh, 11. Nope. Second attack's a dirty 20. 
Mm-hmm. Nine. It's not happy. Ignis is going to self-repair it. Okay. All right, Cecil. Five. Six. He heals eight. Cool. Can you describe what's happening with the tree? I will on its turn, because it has only been a couple of seconds, and nothing else has happened since I mentioned okay, last so nothing time. Else has ha- okay, so yeah. Cecil sees the group pulling Ignis out of the fruit and takes half a step to it, realizes that uh, uh, they're not going to be able to pull anything. I want to go to spend all my movement and get to the tree. Okay. And having watched all of these things disappear so quickly... I want to try and I just pull out a vial and want to try and get a sample of this tree okay. or a, a, a cutting of this tree or a, I don't, I don't know what the right verb is here, but I need some of it for Harper science, please. And thank you. Okay. Um, need to science the tree. Yeah. I will just let you do this because as you get up to it, it goes back to the top of the round and it's its turn. Hell yeah. Your hand gets to the tree and you realize like, where the stone is flaking away and transforming what it's turning back into is a weird kind of fleshy meaty texture and for anyone else except for maybe brother lobazon i would have to have them make a a check for what this is but you serve the tiny pink mushrooms i sure do this is a fungus oh. this is a weird f- mushroom tree okay so you are able to just pull off a chunk and like stopper it. <laughs> I get a chunk of mu- uh chunk o mushroom tree. This tree's not so bad. He's a fun guy. Do 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 do. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> oh brother, this guy <laughs> stinks. <laughs> Arabin, you're up. Okay, so the fruit is still standing barely. Okay. Uh Arabin is is going to uh, attack it. Okay. Well, that's only a seven. Okay. Careful, watch out. Careful, Ignis is in there. Careful. <laughs> he's he's trying to slice like careful superficially. <laughs> Come on. Uh, the second attack is a twenty-four to hit. Watch out. Roll damage. That is five. How do you want to do this? Ooh. Arabin looks at the fruit and tries to see where there's sort of like a tortoise-shaped bulge. <laughs> and try to slice in front of it. Mm-hmm. Try not to harm the tortoise. Protect the bulge. Could you, could you describe <laughs> your tortoise-shaped bulge, Justin? I'd rather not. <laughs> if your tortoise-shaped bulge persists for over four hours, please consult your local physician. Oh my god, killing it. It does require greater restoration. As the goo sort of dissolves, we see Ignis has fully tortoise in like arms and legs have retracted in that's oh. how he that's how he like self repairs we love the tortoise loaf we got a mushroom and a koopa shell so we're good to go as the stone flakes away and this fleshy white trunk begins to reveal itself you can see that damage was clearly done to this tree over the years or maybe even in the instant for a fungus being something in between uh, a plant and an animal existing in this weird nebulous form. Clearly, it could not decide how it really was supposed to react to whatever it was that happened down here. You see that the uh, stone flakes away and the transformation takes hold as it spirals up. And as it does so, you see that domed light flickers and vanishes around you, leaving you in the cavern wholly. The transformation follows the way up into the branches and out through the boughs, and the leaves, by and large, begin to change as well. What was once looked kind of like a maple leaf um, begins to plump up a little bit and have a white underside with a red speckled top. One leaf however, falls. Just one. And as it lands in between all of you, you realize it is caught in between forms. Both mushroom, but also the stone. Do any of you have identify as a spell? I do. Harper, would you... You you realize you could learn a little bit about what's going on here. 
if by casting that. Yeah, totally. For sharks. If I, <laughs> absolutely. If I like, can ID it, because I still have Detect Magic up too. If I, I, I ID this thing as magic pretty quickly. Oh, yeah. If I think I can do so safely, then for science, I have to go in and identify it. You identify the mush maple leaf. Mush maple leaf, you say. It is caught in between transformation between states and could easily be encouraged to go either way. You know that if you encourage this thing to go towards the mushroom portion, this would could be turned into the mush maple bookmark. You could eat a corner of this leaf and it would permanently attune itself to you. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Let me finish. Okay. You can then put this, the rest of the leaf into a book. And for one hour a day, you could have perfect recollection for what's in the book. Huh. Interesting. Eat corner Makes of Harper leaf. Really good at book reports. Eat so corner you of could leaf. It. Put bookmark in book. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the Necronomicon. Have perfect uh, recall. Extent in this uh, universe. <laughs> 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 asking, asking for a friend. <laughs> I was thinking if it like uh, gave you access to a wizard spell book that you didn't have to carry around or something. That's also a thing. Like, look, there. I left the the, the door wide open on that one. Okay. Now, I will say you can only use it once a day. Works for one hour a day. You can move it from book to book, but you can only use it on one book a day. Okay. The other way, if you were to say push it in the other direction. You would get the bones of the leaf, which looks normally like a leaf and can easily be hidden about one's person and would be looked over by any passing person. However, it functions as both a dagger and a set of thieves tools that can never be taken off you. Whoa. That, that one. Do that one. Or you realize that you could give this to the researchers up top. And between their work as diviners and arcanists, they would be able to learn a good bit about what happened down here. Hey. I I relay all of that. Do I feel as if there is a do we have to make a quick decision here or you do not have to make a decision tonight. OK, this is my RP encounter for you all. If you would like to have a discussion about it. Yes, chef. Okay, You could get through Game of Thrones real quick. <laughs> <laughs> I I relay all of this to the party. It's in and is just out of curiosity. Is my detect magic picking up like transmutation? Of course. Anything else of note there? The no. school of magic wise. OK. So was this just one of the lights that was down here and there were more? There's, there are other ones. Yeah. And you can see them from up here. You're, okay. you're a couple of stories up and you can see five other domes of light scattered about the city. Well, we know weird. we've learned quite a bit about this. Um, if they're all the same, then we know how to take care of it. Uh, others can do this. But we have learned almost nothing about the origins of this. Harper. Yeah. I think we can learn more by not turning it, by not forcing the change for science. I, I agree, actually. I mean, like, yeah. not saying these things don't have some unique properties, but, like, honestly, given the idea, there's an outside chance I could maybe, like, replicate it now that I know the theory. I'm not guaranteeing that, but, like, I... I tinker. Um, I think our most, I, I think it's most valuable as a, a research tool for the folks up top. Yeah. Plus, the, plus there's a chance that, you know, there's five more of these. First also one for true. science, the rest of them for fun. For, for, for fun and stuff. First one to blathers. <laughs> the first one to blathers. Although if we fight another one of these things, could you at least warn a guy before you go spinning that top? Yeah, I'm sorry. I thought that was going to like really I thought that was going to shut the whole operation down. Um oh shit, the top. Um I I go I go looking for the, I go looking for the top. I have to text magic up. <laughs> it was super concerning. Vivius. 
I'm sorry, Crunchwrap. He's I, a good boy. Chase, do I find the top? Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, okay. it's yeah. Phew. So is this I'm, thing sort of settling now into this? I'm real this sorry about that. Crunchwrap. Mushroom tree form, not the small bit, but the, mm-hmm. the the thing we were fighting. Yes, the fruit has dissipated entirely, but. Um, the, uh, the tree has at this point, you've been talking for a couple of minutes, has transformed into, um, it's really kind of beautiful now that you're looking at it. Cause like it is, it has these like pockmarked holes through it where the, um, where the liquid element was and the rest of it is just standing there in this weird sculpturesque state. Uh, is can I make a I don't know if this history or nature check I want to know if I know what this is uh, and if I've read about it or mm-hmm. have yeah, knowledge go for it. of giant mushroom trees yeah go ahead and roll history or nature I will take either you let me know I'm proficient in history so I will take that one mm-hmm uh, that is an 18. You know that these exist. They're not super common knowledge. Um, they're frequently, uh, almost exclusively found underground in places of, uh, you know, in dark, damp places. Um, they were... Um, is this an underdark thing? And as much as there is an underdark here, which uh, most people are unaware of, but maybe there is one here. Who knows? More to the point, though, it is. Um, it also has roots in the Fey, in the Gloaming Court specifically. Oh, okay. 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 Things that you know grow in dark places. The Gloaming Court has kept those. Mm, another Fey tree. Somebody call up all trade. <laughs> Well, keep actually, Harper away. <laughs> oh, his interest in this now makes now makes me very curious. Um, we'll take the sample back. I would like to kind of seeing Lobazon inspect the tree. I think mm-hmm. I'll like kind of sidle up near him and yeah. Uh, say yeah like, again, trying to figure out you know if this is natural, if it's been you know yeah. tainted by something that should not be. Just yeah, just trying to get a. What up? I would say it's asking that very specifically. You can tell that this is a natural thing, or at least it was at one point. Clearly, it has been damaged by whatever happened here, uh, but it didn't grow here naturally. You're looking around and you're realizing this is like some sort of like a like an air garden, like a rooftop garden situation. This was probably a place where people would be at the end and want to get some fresh air and go out and like these raised Boxes, they look kind of like flower planters. Looking to Lobazon, I'm like, what's your take on all this? All the like patterns and what's it like? Either it I- is an abandoned dead city or it is something made to look abandoned, dead. You find a, a shell on a beach. It had an occupant, but is that occupant still around or long gone? And what else left did it leave behind? I think we might be looking at what it left behind. Maybe to extend the metaphor, I think maybe something else has moved in. That as well. Or I don't know. I just feel like this. I, I, I'm catching just a bad feeling from those orbs and like they're learning from them. the purpose of those orbs still eludes me as deterrent so far they've not been successful right as ways of learning about us well who would want to learn such things and why all the answers that come to my mind are troubling yeah you can say that again Access is the darkest parts of our minds, so possibly could use it against us. Anyone here afraid of trees? Not particularly, no. No. Not I've yet. Heard, I've heard tale of those who were afraid of trees. They got in a war with them. This was some time ago, but... What? I know, it's it's quite strange, really. That's They've absurd. Got a whole, uh, I've read it in a history book, so it's obviously... <laughs> <laughs> I listen Sometimes. to what... 
I listened to like four read it guys read the book out loud. <laughs> it took turns reading the book. Y'all feel real proud of yourselves. I'm not. It's really bad. <laughs> Do you know how hard it is to make a podcast joke on this show? <laughs> I know enough to know that I don't like it. But beyond that, hopefully some of the people up top can figure out more. So I know, so we can learn why I don't like it. Yes, but we've got plan a plan now. We know what these are, we think. Um, we can give them all a heads up. Um, you know, I think we've done some good work here. We've got a sample to take back. And we're all in one piece. Good work, all. Brother, yeah, you I, certainly earned your paycheck. Simply a pleasure. Don't want to repeat it too often, though. Understood, yes. No, I don't think any of us really do. You all make your way back down the tower, out into the city, and back up into the light of day. We'll call it there. Thank you for joining us here on Another Path. You can find our website and merch store at anotherpathpodcast.com, on Twitter at anotherpathpod, and our network at ghostlightmedia.net. You can support our efforts by donating at patreon.com slash ghostlightmedia, or by giving us a rating and review over on Apple Podcasts or whatever podcatcher will let you. You can find me on Twitter at TQLoudly, Griffin at GriffCold, and Ryan at RyanRoll20. You can find Justin on TikTok at just Justin Michael, and myself at TQLoudly. And a big final thank you to Lehman, who has been kind enough to have joined us for the past several episodes. Uh, you can find Lehman over on his TikTok account, uh, at Mayor Lovecraft, and at the wide variety of his projects over at www.lehmankessler.com. We'll be back in two weeks with a new episode. Until then, remember that you never know what's going to be useful or how it's going to be useful. This has been a Ghostlight Media production.